Mark Spect the Comics, and I'm back with my top 25, not 50, books in the collection, part three. So if I haven't seen already part one and two, those were DC and Independence. Please feel free to go back to those and check those out if you like. Um, this part is going to be Marvel, if you haven't figured that out by now. And part four, which is going to be the last part, will be all my slab books. So um, what are we drinking today? We'll start off with the drink. And it's going to be actually mixed in my coffee. And it's going to be Wiggly Bridge White Whiskey. And you're probably thinking, what the hell is White Whiskey? Um, for your non-whiskey aficionados, all whiskeys start off as this clear white whiskey before entering the aging process. So this whiskey only entered the aging process for a very, very short time. I'm not entirely sure how long. You probably have to ask them specifically. But any spirit to be labeled a white whiskey or a whiskey in general has to be aged for a minimum of 10 seconds. So as you can see in this color, it didn't get any of the characteristics that you normally see in the whiskeys. with those ambers, orange browns that you typically see. So it's very clear. I would imagine it's been only aged for probably less than a week, if anything. But um, this is from Maine. Small, small batch, small craft whiskey. And this is actually batch number seven. So it's a really early batch. Um, the particular blend, it's around 57% corn, 30 and change percent barley, or is it barley? No, 30% rye, and then 5% barley. So um, with these, because they're very strong, this is 50% alcohol, you usually want to mix it in something, otherwise it has a nice bite to it, and it is tough to drink straight. So like I said, I'm mixing this in my coffee, and it's actually pretty good. You can still taste some of those characteristics in there. Um, so enough of that. This week, some news. Um, Saturday night, I'm going to be on Steve Burke Family 54th Comics channel. And we're going to be discussing Marvel vs. DC. So if you guys have a chance, sat Saturday night around 8.30, swing by the channel. We're going to talk about those. We're going to do a discussion, name some of our top 10 villains slash um, favorite characters, heroes, and um, then we're going to compare, have you guys in the chat discuss, and then I'll be doing a giveaway as well. And to have an upper hand in the giveaway, you have to be already subscribed to the channel and watch some of my previous content. And that's all I'm going to say. If you've watched some of my previous content, you're going to have an upper hand at guessing the slab. Alright guys, so hopefully I see you guys there Saturday night. Enough of that. Let's get into the specific books, because that's what we're here for. Alright, in no particular order, we're going to start with, of course, some Moon Knight action, you know? This is Moon Knight number 17. Love this cover. And as you can see here, this is signed by uh, Joe Rubenstein. I picked this up last year when I went to Rhode Island Comic Con. And it... I love how he signed that in the silver as well. Compliments the book. Another Joe Rubenstein signed book. X Factor number six. And this is the uh, first full appearance of Apocalypse. And you can see he signed it here on the side. I love this book too. One of my favorite um, villains from Marvel. And it's in really nice condition. All right. Uh, this is another one of my Moon Knight covers that don't often get spoken about too much. It's a really nice cover by uh, Bill Sankevich. And this is issue number 34. And then one of the very few Frank Miller covers in that same run. This is issue number 27. If you've seen the uh, comic stories recently, this would have been a very cool example of a nice Moon cover. That, cover, that moon right there is huge, but really cool uh, Frank Miller cover. Um, continuing on with Moon Knight, this is Werewolf by Night, issue number 31. And this is the first mention of Mark Spector Moon Knight. 
All right, the next book is Strange Tales 150. This is the first John Buscema on Marvel, and it's also the first appearance of Umar, which is Durmarmu's sister. There we go. Strange Tales, number 157. First appearance of the Living Tribunal. Starting again to some of the uh, Jim Steranko artwork. And issue number 158, which is the first full Living Tribunal, which is my second favorite villain outside of King the Conqueror. Speaking of villains, Strange Wars number two, issue number three, first Beyonder. All right, get into the next stack of books. Here's something a little newer. This is Venom issue number three, the third printing. First full appearance of Null. This is something you've probably never seen before. Something a little bit more recent as well. This is Marvel. The Weekend Presents Starboy, issue number one. It's a one-shot. If you've seen this book before, kudos to you. Um, <laughs> if you're not familiar with The Weekend, he's a rapper. Um, they came out with a little one-shot a couple of years ago. Low print, hard to find. There's also an all-black cover as well, which is worth like five times as much as cover A. So, uh, really cool book. Alright, here's a cover swipe. It's Amazing Spider-Man issue number 306 to Action Comics number 1. Here's Amazing Spider-Man 299. Oh, first appearance of Venom. Here's a virgin variant of Amazing Spider-Man number 2 from the current run. This is limited to 1,000 copies. This is the first cover appearance of Kindred. I think this is a Comics Elite exclusive. Here's Daredevil issue number 254, first appearance of Typhoid Mary. That's a little uh, Bronze Age. Omega the Unknown, issue number one. Character's first appearance. Alright, going on to the next stack. Some more uh, Todd McFarlane here. This is Spider-Man issue number one. And as you can see, this is still poly bag. And it's the new stand. A little harder to find. Some Jap Kirby goodness. Machine Man number one. One of my favorite reads of all time. And this is Infinity Gauntlet, issue number one. Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, issue number one. And to finish off this stack, we've got Iron Fist, issue number 15. I think this is the first appearance of Bushman. Alright. And these would be, I believe, the last stack of books to finish off the 25. This is Immortal Iron Fist, issue number two. And as you can see there, it's signed by Finn Jones, <laughs> the actor that played uh, the Iron Fist in the Disney show. All right, and to finish them off, the last three books, some older books. This is Marvel Super Heroes featuring Captain Marvel, issue number 13. And this is the first appearance of Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. Fantastic Four, issue number 66. It's the origin of him. And to finish off the last book, Nova, issue number one. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my top 25. 
There could have been a lot more, but I wanted it to at least limit it to those. So um, if you do, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like, hit that sub, share the content out there. And um, like I said, to finish off, it's going to be my top 25 slab books. And that will accumulate my, as you can see, 100 books from all of my collection. Um, and make sure you guys check me out and um, on Saturday night on Steve's channel. And we're going to, like I said, talk about Marvel versus DC. And then there will be a little giveaway at the end. All right, guys. Until next time, Smart with the Comics.